greet you all in the name of the Father. And I will come you to this <coughs> program of today. For those who are following, I want to say thank you for tuning up. For tuning up. And those who are joining us for the first time, I want to say thank you and be with us till to the end. And so, those who have been following, it was discussed how the creation started, how God created everything, and afterwards he commanded the day of rest to remember his creation. And so, besides that day, there are some manipulations that are um, being revealed here in the book of Revelation. And this directs us to our topic for today, which is a city called Confusion. A city called Confusion. Our memory text is coming from the book of Revelation chapter 17, verse 14, which says, This will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them. And for he, he is the Lord of Lords and the Kings of Kings. Those who are with him are called the chosen and the faithful. Join me in prayer as we commence. Our gracious, kind, and loving Savior, who dwells up in the Most High, for the God who asks for your praises, may you come and be with us. May you please lead us through, Almighty. May your way bring a positive impact in our lives. This is my humble prayer. We anchor this prayer in, in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so there is a, a great controversy that is being revealed here. It depicts of two characters, of which are women, that symbolizes um, the church. And so one with um, a sign, one clothed with the sign, and the another one uh, clothed, dressed in a scarlet garment. This is found in the book of Revelation chapter 12 and in Revelation chapter 13. So, a striking symbol of a woman um, clothed in, in uh, sun that depicts a, a dazzling glory of God and is found in, uh, as I've said, in the Revelation chapter 12, those who wants to follow, is faithful to her true lover in Jesus. She is not devoured with the corruption of the false doctrines. To drink of the wine of the wrath, that is to be, to be corrupt with the false doctrine of, uh, of the world. Now, remember that we only have the true, the true um, way of God. But if it is mixed with some traditions and customs, then it becomes manipulated and people are, in, are not able to get what really is the light, uh, it's, a, it's a right thing. They fall from the light. It's because the false doctrines are mixed with the real doctrines. And therefore we are not able to see which one is the, uh, what is true, what we should follow. And now, in contrast with the Bible links, the one dressed in scarlet, the, um, the apostasy to the hollow tribe or adultery. From the book of James chapter 4, verse 4, this says, You adulterers, you adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world make himself an enemy of God. If you choose to be a friend of the world, you are making yourself an enemy with God. And that's very dangerous. So, <clears throat> Let us contrast these very two systems here. So, in all the generations, there has um, always been people who are faithful, people who stand in for God. And so, 
reading in the book of Revelation chapter 17 verse 14 and it says these shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall cover them and for he is lord of lord and king of kings and they that with him are called the chosen and faithful so these are called by the name the chosen ones or the faithful ones and god will stand by them however we must be among those uh, among the, the chosen ones <clears throat> so in the ancient cities of babylon we know the story of um Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When God, when, when the king dreamt of um, an image that he did not understand, that he wasn't able to understand, but due to the to the people of God who always exist in both good times and in hard times, they were able to translate the dream. Through God, they prayed and God revealed to them. And so they managed to, interplay, to interpret the dream. And after, afterwards, the king, the king built, a, built the image and commanded everyone to bow down to it. But due to faithfulness and compassion, of knowing that God is there with them, the three Hebrew boys, they did not even pretend to kneel down. They stood firm to what they believed in. This proved that in every um, in every generation, there has always been those who are faithful and those who stand in for Christ. So. The Babylon represent the false teachings and religious system that will similarly character, um, have uh, characteristics to the Old Testament uh, Babylon. <clears throat> and so, the woman dressed in purple. We talked of the woman dressed, um, the one in sun that defeats the, the glory of God. Now we're talking about the the one dressed in purple and scarlet um, stride across the landscape of time. This woman rides upon the scarlet colored beast. The Bible calls her a harlot. She has left her true lover, Jesus Christ. Here the Apostle John gives us the um, graphic portrayal of an apostate uh, system of religion that has powerful influence in the world so <clears throat> look at the wedding this power was one without with whom the king of the earth committed fornication and the inhabitant of the earth were made drunk with the wine of a fornication so in this case, we are saying that the woman de depicts the change. And to be, to, to drink uh, the wine of her fornication, he is to be imaged with the uh, false doctrine of the church. Not really a literal, but this is symbolic. <clears throat> so, the wine of the wrath. The nation uh, um, in Revelation chapter 14 we hear the call saying the gospel will be preached to all the world to every tribe tongue and um, all, the, uh, all the nations tribe, tongue and people and this is the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world so he employs every possible deception to captivate the minds of the inhabitants of the earth. 
we know that the controversy is between worship. The devil uh, desires, highly desires to be worshipped. So it, it will always be between these two. Worship, it will always be between um, worship. Let's take it from the last temptation of Jesus. He told Jesus to say, if you bow down to me, then I'll give you all these that I've shown to you. So he highly desires to be worshipped. He wanted to be part of the creation so that he may also be remembered. That's where um, he stand. That's where he's standing. So Babylon in the great city by declaring that she has committed fornication with the kings of the earth, what is fornication in this case? As I have explained, the false doctrines. So it's an illicit union of the fallen church system uniting with the state. In the true church system, the church is united with Jesus. There are two different things here, uniting with the state and uniting with Jesus. When you are united with the states, all they need is power. But when you unite yourself with Jesus, that depicts that you only want salvation. And once you, you are able to differentiate between the false doctrine and the true and light doctrine, that is not, that is not taken from anywhere else but from the bar, from from his writings, you will be able not to drink of the wrath of the wine of the fornication of the scarlet woman. So, the Babylon, the great city, that had fallen. So, we say that something cannot fall when it was in standing. So, they changed that falls. It was in a good term with the Bible or with true doctrines, but for it to fall, there must be something that had happened. So the Bible built as, um, the the Babel builders built this um, monument for their own glory, and God confused their languages. The the Genesis account put it in this um, in this way. Therefore, it named its name. Its name is called Babel because there the Lord confused the languages of all the earth. For them to be confused and not to be able to, because they they had power. They were working together, and therefore they, for them not to continue in their manner of joining hands and doing what's wrong, for them, because they all, what they wanted is glory, nothing else but glory, of which glory only belongs to God. So God confused the languages and they were not able to, talk, to to communicate and be able to finish their to finish what they started. So in essence with the spiritual Babylon represents a religion based on human teachings. So human teach we must be a late of human teachings that are in contrary with um, that is not derived it may not be direct derived from the Bible but you are able to tell that this is just a human assumption. It is nothing else but uh, human teachings and established on human ideas and supported by human traditions. So when the word of God is mixed without any ground of the biblical perspective, then we are losing the doctrine. So the book of Revelation describes these two systems of religion. The first reveals total trust in Christ and dependence in his word. Without mixing 
the traditions and human idea, it only depends on his word. Then the second revealed trust in human authority, trust uh, and uh, dependence on human religious teachings just to make themselves happy and they want glory to be to be um, they want to be addressed as gods they only want glory which shouldn't be the case at least if you want to worship idols which is actually in contrary with the um, second commandment then if not so then we must bear in mind that the teachings of the human teachings are not uh, biblical um, doctrines they must come they must be derived from the bible even if they aren't direct like but they must have a ground where where they are built on so there is a call to commit uh, to commitment reading from the book of um, let's compare the two verses from the book of Matthew 16 verse 18 Matthew 16 verse 18 and it says and I tell you you are Peter and on this rock I will build my life I will build my church and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. Let's compare it with the Revelation chapter 17 verse 14. They will make war on the Lamb and the Lamb will conquer them. For he is the Lord of God, for he is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings and those with him are called chosen and faithful. So, what is the promise here? Here we were shown that when we build our lives on the rock, which is the faith, truth, and trust, when we build it, when we build our lives on, on the rock, what is being stipulated from the book of uh, Revelation 17 verse 14, we won't be shaken because we um, because we chose the Lord of Lords to be on our side and therefore nothing will ever shake us. So Christian is the solid foundation. His church is built um, upon the rock and the rock cannot be moved no matter how, um, when we build our lives on the rock of which we have already explained to say the truth, the um, trust, we won't be shaken. And so, in the days of ancient Babylon, the church and the states were one and the same thing. When King Nebuchadnezzar sat in his temple on his royal throne, he supposedly spoke uh, for the gods. So, when the church is actually mixed with um, uh, with the state. Here we see power being abused, standing in as a god, commanding people to do things which shouldn't be the case, creating idols and um, tell them to worship them because they have power and um, when we do not follow the, those um, what they say, they have an, an immediate effect. They are forcing to be worshipped. So, in um, let's take a look of uh, one of the books in uh, in the book of Encyclopedias, Encyclical Letters. Written uh, in June 20, on the 20th of June 1894, Pope Leo stated 
to say we hold upon his earth we hold upon this earth the place of almighty god which means they are holding upon this earth then the Pharisees um, ecclesiastical dictionary adds to say the Pope is of so great dignity and exalted that he is not mere man but as it were but as it were God and the, um, the vicar of God the Apostle Paul adds the words exposing this power to say who oppose the ex uh, who oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God that is worshipped, so that he sides as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So remember that the controversy is just between uh, being worshipped. The devil always wants to be worshipped. And looking at these examples here, when the power of the church is invested in the state, we will see that there is force applied and people will be, will be actually not, not even willing, but they will be forced to worship. But if you build a life on Christ, you won't move because you know what the truth is. You know where you get your, the doctrines that we follow. So, let's read um, the two verses from Jeremiah 30, Jeremiah 33. That says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the people of Israel are oppressed, and the people of Judah with them all who took the captive have held them fast they refuse to let them go their redeemer is strong the lord hosts his name he will surely plead their uh, cause that he may give rest to the earth but unrest to the inhabitant of babylon so here Jeremiah is just trying to say you who anchors yourself in Christ God the Lord of Lords will always move with you side to side. So the Babylonians believed that these images were representations of their deities. They believed that they, we, when we worship what the king has has built to us that there we will get all our answers. So the Bible prophets contrast the worship of these lifeless images with the creator God who is both alive and life giving. Reading from the book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 4 it says you shall not make yourself a, a caved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath and that is in the waters under the earth. You shall not bow down to them to, or, to, or save them for I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God. Visit, uh, visiting the iniquity of the father on the children to the third of the and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing his steadfast love to the thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. God desires to be worshipped, and therefore he gave. On, fourth, on, on the first and fourth commandment, which highly shows the relationship between God and man, how we should conduct ourselves 
So if we truly love him, then we must follow what he commands us to do. For when we, when we have him on this um, journey with a lot of barriers, we are able to, to penetrate through and to reach without um, difficulties because we know that nothing is impossible with God. So the use of images as object of worship is so-called uh, veneration is a violation of the second commandment because it limits the ability of Holy, uh, Holy Spirit to be impressed upon our mind and things of entity, of eternity, and reduces the majesty of God a lifeless status. Unfortunately, these images are often um, given as sacredness an homage that belongs to God alone. We must pay homage to God alone and not worship um, idols. Shouldn't be at all, I am idol worshippers because they are lifeless and they don't give life. They were created by God Himself. And why worshiping something that was created by God instead of creating the portal of the thing? So the message of Revelation chapter 14 announcing the fall of Babylon must apply to religious bodies. We shouldn't fall from the truth that we are standing. Instead, we must remain pure and not to be corrupt, not to be devoured, not to, be, not to drink the wrath of the wine of the false doctrines. So what relationship does the Tower of Babel have to the modern spiritual Babylon? What is the similarities between the two? So we see that it was standing firm in the first place, but it fails due to misconduct. So we have the teachings, we have um, the truth in us. But once we are exposed to what is bad, we slowly, we slowly um, fell off like Babel. This is what Revelation chapter 14 is trying to say. So Babylon must apply to religious bodies that were once pure and must and have become corrupt. Since this message follows the warning of the judgment, it must be given in the last days. Therefore, it cannot, it cannot refer to the Roman church alone, for that church has been in a fallen condition for many, century, for many centuries. So it is us ourselves to see what is true, building a life on a rock command us to depict from the truth which is the Bible. God said, I'm the only way, the truth, and the light. And therefore, anything, if we go beyond what he said, then we'll get lost without knowing which are the true doctrines. We must know that they are derived from the Bible and we are able to tell the difference. What is that of the human and what is that of God? What is built on um, traditions and customs is very different from what God gave us human to follow. This is what um, the confused, this is what the confused, the, a city called confused is, uh, is like because it is mixed with the doctrine that God gave us with human doctrines. But when we know that these doctrines are derived from this side, 
and these doctrines are derived from that side and we know what to follow, then we are able to be saved and we won't um, and we won't go wrong and let's ensure that we build life on uh, what we believe which is true and that's the only um, that's the only way that we can be saved as Christians we know that everything that we do we drive them from the Bible and therefore for us to have the light and reflect it to others we must build it first then we are able to do what God sent us to do thank you for joining us uh, thank you for remaining to the end Shall we join in join us in prayer? Our gracious, kind and loving Savior, who does up in the most high. Father God, we want to say thank you for bringing us this message. May you please help us be able to identify, not to be built in a confused city, but be able to tell what is true and what is not. And help us to disseminate your message. For when we build the life on, on, on you, Almighty, we won't be shaken, but to be encouraged to move. This is my humble prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.